So when you first go to the website, um, you will see a code interpreter on the left and kind of a results window on the right. The first thing I like to do is set the theme to dark for less eye strain. Uh, start using turtle, we need to type import turtle, and that brings all the functionality of the turtle into the current file and set of commands for the workspace. We're going to define a variable called t, and t is going to be um, a function call, which is predefined, and basically lets you get a handle on the turtle. You can actually see it on the right hand screen. Turtle is an arrow, and if you move forward or backwards, it will draw a line. Forward would be towards the point of the arrow. You can also turn the arrow left and right and do some cool shapes. So let's start with a line. And to do that, you just call t dot and you put in forward. We'll say 10. The units can be anything you like. When we run this, we should see, and I think it's kind of small. Let's try 50 and run it again. There we go. Now the turtle's drawing a nice line. So well, that's interesting, right? Now let's say we want to draw a square. Um, we can say t dot left, and we're going to turn by 90 degrees. Then we want to go forward again. So let's copy and paste this line. And we're going to say, once you've turned left, go forward by another 50. So we can see it draw half of a square. So then if we copy and paste this again, we get the rest of the square. Oh, I mean, uh, we got to do one more. For, <laughs> whoops. You can see it's doing the same thing four times in a row. So what we'll get to now is how to use a loop to make this happen only once. And to do that, you can say for uh, square sides in range, it's lowercase r, and we're going to give it four because there's four sides. Now, because uh, Python loops and uh, if statements depend upon indentation, so anything that's indented after this guy will be included in the loop. We only need to do these things once because it's inside a loop and when we run it it should draw a square just like we did before now what we can do from this point is to find some variables and make things a little more interesting first i'm going to define a variable called square oops square uh, actually let's call it side length and for now let's set that to be 50. then instead of 50 i can use side length and if we run it, it should do the same thing. Now, this is where things get interesting because drawing the square in our loop, we're gonna put the drawing of one square inside of another loop that draws a whole bunch of squares. So for num squares in, oops, squares in range, uh, let's do 25. Actually, we're gonna start this a little bit smaller, five. So now again, we have to indent so that this loop and all of its pieces are inside of this. This is called an outer loop. This is called an inner loop. Now, once we're done, if we left it like this, it would draw five squares on top of each other. So the key here is that inside of the outer loop, we're going to add, after it draws one square from the inner loop, we're going to go ahead and rotate a little more. And let's go by mm, 45. And this should draw a couple of squares that are tilted on top of each other. There we go. Anybody who's used Spirograph from back in the day, uh, you can end up with some pretty cool similar stuff. So um, one thing to note is that it takes a little while and we can get into ways to increase the speed and we can also change the color. So now we get some nice rainbow looking stuff. So first let's start with some colors. I'm going to define a list of colors called my colors and we're going to give it um, square brackets, and inside of that, we're gonna give it some colors. Red, uh, blue, yellow, uh, magenta is pretty popular these days, pink, cyan, uh, what am I missing? Green, RGB, okay. Now, colors is basically a list of colors. So if we wanted to set the color during uh, or before the drawing of a square, we can put a new line underneath the outer loop and say, t dot color and you give it the color you'd like so for example i could say my colors one which would be the second entry in the list because they start from zero so if i run this i should get blue squares all right that's cool um you know that's pretty neat now let's try changing up the colors to make them random 
So to do a random number, we need to import a package called, amazingly enough, random. Now down here, um, before we set the color, we're going to define a variable called my color idx, which is short for index. And we can say things like random dot random. What this gives us is a random number between zero and one. So because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors, we're going to multiply that times seven. Um, this will still be a float or a decimal number because this is not going to be zero or one. It's going to be in between. So we have to cast this or change it into an integer because you can't reference part of a list with a decimal number. With this done, we can now replace the color to be used by my color IDX. So every time it draws a square, it's going to pick a random color, change the turtle color to that, and draw the next square. So if I did this right, when we run it, we should see, uh-oh, bad input on line 11. And ran, oh, this has to be the lowercase r. Let's try that again. And it still doesn't like it. All right, hold on. Ah, I, I don't need to define my color IDX as an int. I'm too used to C and C++. So when we run this, we should get different color squares every time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and this guy cruises along. I think now it's time that we started looking at making it run faster so we can add a lot more squares for some cool effects. In order to do that, we can add one line that says t.tracer. And this is something that's used to uh, update or show or not update the turtle as it runs. So now we're not gonna show every step as it goes. It's gonna do it in the background. And when we're done, we have to call t.update. It's just a different way to do things. And now when we run it, we'll get the same thing with different colors every time. Every time we run it, the colors will be random. I want this to be a little more detailed. Now we're going to crank up the number of rectangles to 25. And we're going to change our angular displacement or how much it tilts each one and make it a little less. Let's go to 10. Now when we run, that's what I want to see. That's a cool kind of old school spirograph. So that's one way to get... Um, some interesting art and we can make this a little bit bigger. So let's go to 30 and then let's make our side legs a little bigger and play with that. Let's go to 66. The whole thing should be bigger. There you go. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot more that we can do with this and we'll get started on it in a second. All right, a few more things on our squares that make spirals. First, I'm going to reduce our pivot of each one to make it smoother. And by doing that, we're going to need at least twice as many. It looks like a few more, so I'm going to go to 75. Now, if we run this, it'll draw it a little bit more smoothly, and we get a cool-looking spiral. Uh, that's pretty slick. Now, what if we change our side line? We have it fixed at 66, but you know what? We could add one and make it bigger each time. And to do that, it'll give us, uh, we can say side length is equal to side length plus one. So now every time it draws a square, it's going to get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and we'll start to get some spiral action. That's pretty slick. You can make it even bigger and say it doubles, or excuse me, goes by two, and we'll get a bigger spiral. So we could start perhaps with a smaller side length and then have this go up by five. We'll start small. Oh, whoops, I put in 2,000. <laughs> Let's try that again. 25. There we go. So that's some of the neat stuff that you can do just using Turtle and Python and squares with some loops and some random color generation. Uh, excuse me, random number generation. So everything that's been constant here has been the square. That's always been a square since we started. And that's because we turn left by 90 and we go to 4. How about we change it up and make it um, a hexagon? So let's go by 60 because 60 times 6 is 360, and we've got to go to 6. Now when we run this, if I did it right, we get hexagons. That's pretty cool. Let's start this uh, same size, and we'll spiral out more slowly by changing the length increase to 1. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that, like a Nautilus or something. All right, there's a lot more that you can do with this. You could put in a loop, so instead of random colors, it cycles through the colors and makes a color pattern. Uh, well, maybe we'll take a look at that next. So to cycle through, we need to create a variable that is, um, well, actually, we can still use my color IDX. But instead of using random, and with a number sign, I can comment that out. So I have it there for future reference, but I don't need to use it now. What we can say here is my color IDX is defined to start at zero. So what we're going to do is still pass my color IDX 
to the drawing of the pen change color. The difference is at the end of the outer loop, after we turn left, we're going to increment the color by my color IDX equals my color IDX plus one. Now we got to check that goes past the end of the list. So if my color IDX is greater than, oops, not 78, if it's seven, and then with a colon indent, you simply say it equals zero again. Now if I did this right, when we run it, you should get a consistent pattern and not an error. I got an error. I think we probably went too far. Uh, oh, there's seven, so you got, oh, sorry, it starts at zero, so you need to go from six. Oh, wait, what do you go? There we go. Now we have a streamed and continuous color pattern that will go the way we like it. And let's make a cool picture here to finish off with our octagons. Instead of it increasing in length uh, so that it gets bigger, we're going to start it off at a decent size, and we're going to let it run all the way through a complete circle. And there you go. That's pretty cool. There's a lot more that you can do with this, and we're going to look at a little bit more at random numbers and how to make randomly generated art next. All right, so for a little bit of a new project, um, I'm going to keep some of this because I still want to do colors, um, and I'm still going to have an outer loop, but I'm not going to have a side length, and I'm not going to have an inner loop anymore. So we're going to get rid of all of this. So now what we have is a color indexing loop. What we're going to do here is something a little more interesting. How about if we make art that changes every time you run it? For example, um, let's define my num is going to be random dot random, and let's take that um, and multiply it times ten. And I would like it to be an integer, so we will cast it to an integer type. Now, what we've got here is a number that's going to be between um, one and ten, or maybe zero and ten. So let's do something interesting. If the number is greater than five, then I want to turn the turtle left, uh, left, and let's go maybe 30 degrees. Then is an if statement, you can say else, which means if it's less than five, we're going to say t dot right by 30 degrees. Now, if I've done this right, and we're going to set the range to only do this 10 times, what we also need is to move. So the turtle is going to turn in a random direction by a fixed amount. Then we're going to move it forward by, I don't know, let's try 20. And if I did this right, the little guy should start drawing all kinds of crazy stuff. There you go. So why don't we cut our length down to maybe 15. And let's do it um, 50 times. And actually, I'd like to see it happen. So let's comment out the update and the tracer and hit run. And we should see our turtle do some random directions and draw it. No, oh, he's going to go off the screen. All right, that's okay. You can stop this, and we can set it back to um, 10. And we can set it to only do it 25 times. And there he goes. You can do some other things with line widths and drawing other circles at these locations. So let's take the tracer off so that we can not have to see it run. And now it should be just running. Oops, uh, I messed something up. Hold on. Ah, our indentation got messed up. That's what I thought. Now it should run. Oops. I'll match outer level. T dot update should be back here. As I said, it's very picky. And there you go. So now every time you run it, you will have a new little different directional doodle. We can also change it up by, um, let's say we go to 45 instead of 30, and we'll let it go for 50 times. What do you get? Oh, that's pretty cool. See, you can get some neat, interesting geometric shapes. In fact, let's give it 90. Now we get some funky square shapes again. <clears throat> so we started with squares, we went to uh, spiral squares, and then hexagon squares, and let's give it a little more length here, like 25. And now we've come to randomly generated square patterns. You could probably use these for a maze or something for a game. So there you go. Uh, Python's fun. Thanks for listening.